Hi, everyone. Welcome to the iSpring Solutions webinar series, where every week we talk about e-learning trends, uh, share iSpring tips and tricks, and cover clients' cases. My name is Paulina. I am the community manager at iSpring, and I will be the moderator for today's session. And today we're going to touch on a very interesting topic that's super important because we are all right now in the internet world trying to stay humanized. <laughs> and of course, we need to keep our e-learning humanized as well. And today we're going, I mean, our speaker is going to cover some of the tips and tricks on how you can do it using an authoring tool, as well as using some of the top trends of the e-learning. And of course, moving on to our presenter, that's our one and only Alex Green, uh, Customer Success Manager. Hi, Alex. Thanks a lot for tuning in. How are you today? Hi, Paulina. I am actually doing great. How about you? I'm doing amazing and I'm super excited for you to share the knowledge with our today's attendees. All right, perfect. Um, hello, everyone. Nice to see you all here today. Now, um, I'm not going to make a long introduction and rather get straight to the point. Uh, I am going to turn off my webcam right now and share my screen with you. Perfect. So let's get started and cover the topic of how to humanize e-learning. The first point I would like to cover is the top trends in digital learning in 2021. Let's start with the emphasis on the science of learning. More and more learning professionals will base their work on learning science when developing training content, which will definitely enhance the quality of the content. And one of the sub-trends here is humanizing online learning. Many experts believe that with the evolution of online learning, training industry professionals must become even more focused on the human factor than ever before. And first and foremost, this trend will influence the quality of the learning content. Now, 2021 may be the year we see a significant shift towards a deeper value for learner-centric content, empowered, of course, by technology and innovations that offer increased accommodations for human behavior. The second one is microlearning. We'll see more companies shifting to use e-learning content focused on developing a specific skill highly targeted to the subject and of shorter duration. The third one is immersive content. A lot of L&D teams will address VR and AR technologies and create learning experiences that closely emulate real life situations and enable physical practice within them in real time. Chatbots will serve as efficient, intelligent teaching assistants in many educational institutions. They'll relieve instructors from regular tasks like answering students' routine questions. Expanded LMS. Now, learning platforms will continue to expand with new features. The LMS of the future will serve as a solid foundation upon which more layers of functionality will appear. An LMS will also serve as a recommendation system. Each learner will be able to get an individualized list of recommended e-courses based on their job position and competences. The last but not least is increased data tracking and analysis. Companies will invest more in e-learning technologies that provide better opportunities for the tracking, collection, and analysis of learning data. As you might know, the pandemic forced a lot of organizations to invest in HR tech, and this has led to 75% of the L&D function becoming tech-enabled. Do you think it can be a challenge to engage learners with a digitally-led learning culture, which is missing human touch? One of the biggest challenges in e-learning is the absence of a trainer, which can lead to missing the so-called human touch. But allow me to disagree, as I think that a lack of a trainer can be a huge advantage, and let me explain what I mean. In face-to-face -face training, 
learners are required to follow the same learning timeline. But every student is different and digests information at a different pace. E-learning allows studying at an individual pace that is suitable for each learner. That leads to stress-free and mentor-free education, and therefore better content retention. All this leads to better business results. E-learning helps to save time both for the student and the trainer. There is content that can be digested by students on their own, such as lectures, rules, and regulations. If there are any remaining questions, an online session can be held where you will focus only on these questions. These kinds of brief one-on-one -on -one sessions can let learners know that they are not alone and give them a greater feeling of assurance. Five to 10 years ago, we would have had the same question. How can we engage our learners if we are not in a classroom, if we don't see them and they don't see us? But now with all the technology that is available, we should not be worried about not providing truly engaging content. There are so many ways that allow us to interact with the content, such as video lectures, dialogue simulations, branching scenarios, to name a few. Um, what I would also like to add here is that there are some industries, such as manufacturing or healthcare, that require hands-on training. And e-learning can provide a safe environment for a continuous learning process. So how do you think we can humanize learning? There are tons of features available in the top e-learning tools. Let me cover them using iSpring Suite Max as an example. To make your learners feel as though they are watching a live lecture, I'd recommend using video and audio narration. If you have too much text that you need to use for a voiceover, you can always explore text-to-speech conversion functionality. Screencasts is another great feature since you can capture your activity on the screen instead of offering a static text. To build conversation simulations that effectively train communication skills, you can use dialogue simulation and characters. Interactions, basically diagrams, timelines, media cards, and others make your content more engaging and appealing to your learners. Interactive types of questions, such as drag and drop, hotspot, type in, all of these require action taken from your learners and it keeps them alert. Gamification. This can include the question types that I mentioned above, as well as the timer, points, change in a character's emotion, depending on the action taken, and so on. With quizzes, you can create mini games, flashcards, and other types of great content. Feedback messages in a course are very important and serve the idea of humanized training just perfectly. All of the above leads to the interaction of our learners with the course. Branching is another great technique that a trainer can include in a course to lead their learners. Branching is much more than just right or wrong answers. It's a path from point A to point B that can include partially correct answers. The only difference here would be that one route would take a longer time to complete than the other. But eventually, you will get to point B. That approach definitely can be compared to a situation where a trainer is aware that a learner knows the answer and asks leading questions to get them to the correct one. Moreover, to make the training process more humanized, don't forget to use blended approach and schedule one-on-one -on -one meetings to keep track of learners' progress. And try to be there when they need you through a chat or a commenting feature, for example. That definitely helps. 
Can you also quote some of the best practices from your organization on creating a digital-led learning culture while staying human? We had a great case recently. One of our clients, a large manufacturing company, needed to introduce formal automated onboarding for their employees in order to manage turnover, increase staff efficiency, and reduce training time and expenses. At the beginning of the company's journey, our client faced specific challenges, but managed to overcome them with e-learning. The first challenge in onboarding employees in the manufacturing industry is that there are higher risks and fatal consequences due to mistakes. Our clients designed a mandatory course on hygiene and safety, uploaded it to the LMS, and assigned it to learners before they started their practical tasks. According to our clients, it helped them reduce accidents by 50%. The next challenge that was identified was a discrepancy between employees' initial results and trainers' expectations. Our clients used general guidelines and instructions that were stored in the knowledge base to which employees had access 24-7. The third challenge, on-the-job training is risky, but in manufacturing it is hard to make training strictly theoretical, and a blended approach is needed. Our clients scheduled online and in-class sessions through the LMS. Their learners had to read about the process, watch the tutorial, go through a self-check, and only then they were able to perform this task in real life with a supervisor. Challenge number four, according to our client, is that the best way to clarify the expected results and how the processes should be conducted is to develop formal documentation. But most of the materials they had developed so far were in plain text format and were not ready to be turned into actual training. So our client used an authoring tool to turn the paper-based reading materials into easy to follow interactive courses, how-to videos, and online quizzes. The final challenge was a lack of comprehensive and objective training tracking tools. Our client implemented the LMS platform that provides enhanced online reporting. In our client situation, they had one training and development manager responsible for 50 learners at a time. But all of them felt supported and knew they could ask her any question because she knows how to help. And she knew it because she would go to her report dashboard every day to take a look at the overall progress of her group of students so she can easily find any gaps. The results were impressive. In nine months after moving their training online, our clients saved 1,020 hours of work as well as $5,000 each month. But most importantly, they reduced turnover from 18% to 0% and reduced their onboarding time by 10%. All right, our next point is some key attributes one should consider while selecting a digital learning solution. Well. It really depends on what kind of solution you are selecting. An authoring tool, an LMS, a web conferencing platform, or all of these functions. But there are some general steps I would recommend following when selecting a digital learning solution. Identify your needs, determine your goals and objectives. Ask yourself, what do I want to achieve from implementing the learning technology. From the answer, it will become clear what results to look for. Aims should be specific, measurable, achievable, and time limited. Know your audience. Knowing your audience will help you better define your learning strategy requirements with a digital learning solution. 
define your learning solutions requirements in terms of functionality, technical and cost requirements. Explore the market, view solution ratings and customer reviews. Evaluate vendors. The last goal in this step is to get a short list of three to five vendors. To achieve this, I recommend that you browse through vendors' websites, test the solution, and ask for a use case demonstration. And of course, the last step is to choose the right solution. Um, <clears throat> when our clients decide to implement a digital learning solution in their company, they contact us and instead of suggesting our products right away, we guide our clients through all of these steps and ask, and ask clarifying questions in order to help them make an informed decision and choose the right solutions for their needs. It usually takes us one week at most to analyze a client's case, create guidelines with recommendations and select the best solution. Our last point here are the challenges in the current digital learning solutions, which deter the adoption of learning tools. I think the biggest challenge that prevent the adoption of learning tools are a lack of time and human resources. Now, in a COVID situation, many companies are facing an urgent need to switch training from offline to online quickly, but it always takes time to adopt new technologies, create learning programs, and start employee training. Plus, not everyone who is engaged in training knows how to work with course authoring tools and LMSs. And many of the digital learning solutions are aimed at professionals with a lot of experience. That's why for many companies, with no previous experience in e-learning, it becomes a real problem to adopt learning tools. The solution is to select tools with little or no learning curve that have a user-friendly interface and are easy to use, as well as provide users with technical support. Today, we covered several effective ways to bring more humanization to e-learning, determined what features you can use to humanize online courses, learned a user experience of our clients who moved learning online, and got a couple of practical tips on how to find the best e-learning solution for your company. By the way, we have a collection of free white papers on our website to help you select the right LMS, authoring tool, launch employee onboarding, and so on. All right, now I am ready to move to a Q&A session. Thank you so much for, for this presentation, first of all, and second of all, for moving forward with the questions. Um, OK, so let's see if we have any questions or comments. Um, Heidi says more in depth about info about humanizing your learning projects. I think this may be mm -hmm. that you maybe cover this um, during the one to one session itself. Right. That's something that I believe would be more individual depending on a number of factors, your industry, your current project the number of employees and your previous experience with e-learning, but we will definitely reach out to discuss this in more detail. Mm -hmm. And Yvette says, I see you have a white paper on how to create a course for Moodle. Are there plans for one on creating course for Blackboard or course sites? That is actually an interesting question. Um, generally, e-learning courses remain to be, um, in terms of the course content itself, they remain to be more or less similar to one another depending, um, and it does not depend on the exact LMS solution, yet LMA, uh, Moodle LMS remains to be one of the most popular for the academic industry. Um, Blackboard and course sites, that is something that 
uh, I would actually like your account manager to take a look at. Mm -hmm. And also, I would like to share a link with everybody to the webinars that we have, um, and they are dedicated to building a SCORM course in iSpring, first of all, and then actually building a course for Moodle LMS. So hopefully maybe that helps you as well. Miguel is asking, do you measure attendance at your webinars? What is your most popular training? Um, thanks a lot for that question. Yes, of course, we do measure how many people come to our webinars. And um, the most popular training I would say is was on how to build a SCORM course in iSpring. So I definitely recommend to check this one out. Um, so, Alex, there is a question from Kimberly. I work for a support desk where our representatives are working a few different systems on one call with our customer. What do you recommend as a solution to capture that process? Are there any, do you have any idea on that? Um, Kimberly, if I may ask, do you refer to training your new support representatives on, on how they should use these different software solutions and how they um, should structure the work within them. If that's the case, then screencast should be um, a great option for you um, so that you could actually guide them through the whole process so that they could make sure that they are following the same steps. The second feature that could help you out a lot is a quiz with hotspot questions where you can uh, mark specific areas that would be designed as the correct answers for your software solution. And third, my personal favorite, it's dialogue simulations. If you were referring to soft skill training, if you would like them to practice their speaking with the clients before they actually start working with them. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks a lot, Alex. And um, Karen is um, offering to check out uh, training.zendesk. So I hope you have more ideas <laughs> towards your question. Um, and also Mark is mentioning that the series of PowerPoint versus iSpring was a good webinar series too. Um, Thanks a lot for mentioning that, Mark. All of that you will be able to find on our YouTube channel um, and check it out. Perfect. Okay, so I think we do not have any other questions or comments that we need to cover right now at the moment, but um, if you have any questions regarding the product or actually um, launching e-learning or ways uh, that you can use e-learning to uh, achieve your goals or close the projects faster. You are more than welcome to uh, connect with Alex. Alex, I'm sharing your email address. So that Definitely. You know. um, Alex Green at iSpring.com. Uh, he will be more than happy to uh, assist you with any questions that you have and together you will be able to uh, come or achieve the results faster. Great. <laughs> All right. Anything else, Alex? I believe that's it for me. Um, everyone, feel free to reach out to me directly. I'll be glad to assist you, uh, come up with some recommendations for your specific cases, and actually help you get started with e-learning. That's awesome. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming today for spending that valuable half an hour with us and uh, hopefully we provided you with some ideas that you can use to make your content more humanized and um, just uh, better for your learners better better for the people who are most important in this training chain <laughs> Okay, so hope everyone has a lovely day and we will see you at the next webinar. Sign up for the branching session. We will be waiting for you there. Bye everybody. Bye Alex. Thank you. Goodbye.